Hi everyone, we're going to be talking about how to solve inequalities today um, or graph them. Um, this is topic 4-7. So I say graph and solve kind of hand in hand because to solve an inequality you basically want to show the reader or the person checking your work what the solutions are to the inequality. Um, but if I were to just list them, think about the inequality x is greater than 5. So we would have to figure out what values of x I can have that would be greater than 5. Well, 5 and a half is greater than 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I could spend the rest of my life listing solutions to that one inequality. So instead of making lists, um, we are going to draw on number lines to represent what kind of numbers are the solutions. Um, so there's different ways to format our number line to show um, what numbers you could plug in. So you're going to have to type the words included and not included here. A closed circle on a number line. So you're going to be putting um, a dot or a circle on your number lines. Um, and that is indicating that the value is included in the solution. So let's say, let's go back to x and 5. If I said x was greater than or equal to 5, right, on the number line, I want to make sure, well, 5 is a solution. 5 is equal to 5. Um, so I want to use a closed circle to represent, okay, I'm filling that in to include it. An open circle, think about an open circle, right, it's kind of like it's unchecked. Um, that would not be included. So if I had x is greater than 5, I'm still going to put my circle on 5. Um, but I'm not going to fill it in. So x is greater than 5 would have a circle. And then I'll show you the next part on how to shade the number line. Um, the reason you wouldn't just start at 6 um, is because we have to take into account decimals and fractions, right? x is greater than 5, your first solution isn't 6. It's actually a fraction. Think about like 5.1 or 5.5, 5 and, a half, five and 3 fourths. All of those values are greater than 5, uh, which is why we do write the circle on 5. We just don't fill it in. This chart down here is already filled out, um, similar to what we did yesterday, just some keywords we'll see as we talk about inequalities. All right, we're going to fill in the blanks here. Um, so the solution of an inequality shows all okay sorry this should not be solution it's going to be the graph of an inequality shows all solutions of an inequality on the number line so when I say graph, we're not talking about like a coordinate grid and graphing it on there. We're talking about graphing on just one number line, one straight number line. The next three blanks is each number in the shaded area makes the inequality true. So basically wherever, wherever we shaded or filled in the circle, um, those are solutions that would make the inequality true. Something about number lines that is helpful and why we use them is those arrows kind of say, well, after four, everything after four, including it. So we're going to fill in the number line itself and those arrows to represent, hey, we're going to go on forever. So anything after four, that's, you know, fair game. That's a solution. You're going to be doing this on Kami. So you will have a pencil tool or a drawing tool. You can also insert shapes for the circles. Um, but the drawing tool itself is going to work well for this. So the first one is G is less than or equal to 2. Well, let's think about what is less than 2, right? Numbers like 1, 0, um, 2 is equal to 2. So 2 is um, an example. Um, negatives, right? So you always want to draw the circle on the number that's there. So I see the number 2. So I'm always just going to draw a circle on 2. Then I have to ask myself, should that be shaded in or does it need to stay open? I have that equal to part. So if I go back here, right, these signs need a filled in circle. So I'm going to fill that in. 
Now I'm going to determine, should I shade to the right of the circle or to the left? And I'm shading solutions to the inequality. So 1 would work, right? 1 is less than 2, 0 is less than 2. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to cross out the numbers, but I'm just going to kind of like highlight that part of the number line. And then when I get to the end, also do my arrow. Um, and that's how you solve inequalities, is you show on a number line what are the possible solutions. All right, f is greater than 0. So again, I see the number 0. I'm going to draw my circle. I'm going to ask myself, does it need to be shaded in or does it not? Um, there's no equal to part, so it stays open. 0 is not a solution. All right, but... 0.1 is, 0.2, 1 half. So that's why I'm not starting at 1 or negative 1. And F is greater than 0. So F could be 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to shade those numbers. So those, all those numbers are to the right. Okay. Our next one, C is less than negative 3. So again, I'm just going to put my circle on negative 3. Does it need to stay open or closed? Um, it's going to stay open because it's, again, you can keep going back to this slide. It's a symbol without the equal to part, so we're not going to include it in our solution. And we want numbers less than negative 3. So remember, positive numbers are going to be greater than negative 3. So we are going to shade to the left. And remember, negative 4 actually is less than negative 3. You're more in debt, you have less money, um, getting more negative. And this one is tricky, so I would just read it in reverse. So start with the variable and read it that way. So k is less than or equal to negative 2. Um, I can't just flip the numbers around without changing the symbol. Okay, so really, if I'm going to flip the numbers the sign also has to flip, right? Because that point is facing the K. So notice the sign flips as well. Um, so K is less than or equal to 2. Oh, negative 2. Sorry, guys. I'm <laughs> just choking. Ew. All right. K is, less than or, K is less than or equal to negative 2. So circle on negative 2. I do have that equal to part, so I'm going to fill in that circle. And we're going to shade in all the values less than negative 2. So we're going to shade this way. All right, so th this Ed Puzzle goes over the notes. Um, the second Ed Puzzle is just going over the directions for your practice problem. So make sure to watch the second video. It's going to be quick. I'm just giving directions.